Hi royalties, I'm Tammy, the queen of DIY. Welcome back to the palace. And today I am going to show you how to do a DIY high-end headboard. Now what you're going to get with this headboard is I'm going to show you how to create a very luxe, glamorous, high-end headboard at a mere fraction of the cost. So, if this sounds like what you're interested in, I need you to keep watching. But if you're by chance watching and you're not a family member of the Queen of DIY, I need you to hit that subscribe button and tap that bell so you'll know when I am uploading a video. All right, everyone, let's get right into this DIY headboard tutorial. <music> And again, we are doing a DIY headboard tutorial. Now, the items of what you're going to need for this tutorial, you know you're going to need your staples. And I'm actually using the Arrow T50, the 3 8 inch, or the 10, I'm sorry, yeah, the 10 mm. You're going to need your staple gun. And you're also going to need fabric. And this is our lovely fabric. And this fabric was actually, this is actually Waverly Inspiration. It was purchased from Walmart. And it was $9.88 per yard. And I actually got four and a half yards to do this um, project. All right. And you're going to also, you may need your hammer and you may need an, an assistance. I have my assistant here. But if I can get them on camera, we'll film that way. If not, we'll have to work around my helper for the day. All right. If you want to see how I'm going to show you how to redo this headboard, just keep on watching. All right. This is my current headboard, and you're going to get to see some real life. I got the headboard away from the bed, and this is that headboard that I actually DIYed. Now, I am going to show you the actual original clip. When I first made this headboard, I made it brown. Then I came back with the black. So, I'm going to insert a clip of the first headboard look. Followed by this look here with the whole overview. What I'm going to do first is, we're actually going to unroll the fabric. And uh, my helper does not want to be on camera. So we're going to film it on an angle. And I'm actually going to do two different projects with this fabric here that I bought. So, and I'm just going to unravel it. You got it? Okay. He's not ready for the camera yet. <laughs> so. What we, what we do first is, and I don't know if you can see, but this board that I did create this with, I actually created this with a three-quarter inch piece of uh, plywood. I will tell you, um, I'll never do one with this size plywood ever again because it made it extremely heavy. So, I would recommend MDS board. And if you are very crafty, you probably you probably can get by with just even a half inch um, or your thinnest, your thinnest um, plywood as possible. Or even a sheet of the particle board. You can also use just like a sheet of... Um, paneling any type of paneling wood like you can use that and it'll be more easier but and because this is so heavy and I am not right now uh, still good on lifting we had to improvise in order for to, for me to have help to do this that we still could not actually lay this thing on the way down because I'm no good trying to fix it so uh, we're gonna I'm going to show you how we're actually going to fix it. Now, all I did, I just leaned it forward. I'm going to actually let you see. You'll get to see 
how I got it tacked on the back and what I did with it because I actually created legs. Originally, I was going to take this and mount it on the wall. And before I did this with the black, I was actually doing, um, putting my buttons in it all the way through. And you'll be able to see that on the back. But when I went to, with the black, I changed. And as you can see, these are my legs that I apply. And I added a cloth because it would originally hit the wall <laughs> but you can see where it was originally brown i came back with the black and as you can see my holes and my threading and a lot of it you can't see because i have fish lines with holes everywhere for my original button buttons that i had on the headboard so i'm going to position this so that you can see how and I think what I'm gonna have to do is get help starting it because he don't want to be on camera then once we tack in that first piece I'll come back and let you follow along where we it will be easier I have just we pinned it in the middle as you can see and I've cut it so and uh, all I did, if if you are attempting or you have to do this alone, get your fabric position, pin it in the middle, and work, work yourself over from the middle to each end. But make sure when you're pinning, once you get those first few staples in and come across as you moving or are moving across, I'm sorry, to actually get this staple down you still need to be actually pulling that fabric and i don't know if you can see the color as well but it's actually and they said this particular one was a white but it's actually silver with hues of white throughout which you'll be seeing uh the room reveal for this room probably the week after um after you see this video for this and i am going to have to bump my videos to get everything put in place in order for me to meet my fall home tour deadline but we have that and i'm going to let you see how i'm actually getting ready to do some of the pinning again All right, and as you see here, this is where I, we started the pinning. And all we're doing is you're pulling it and you're pulling her as tight as you can get her. And you're just going across, stapling the fabric. Now, if you don't use as heavy of a board as I did with this three-quarter inch plywood, this is truly a one-man job very very easily but with the weight uh this definitely has to be a two-man job so and i'm going to show you how to actually cut the corners and i use a little more staples you don't have to use as many as i did i probably put my staples about probably about um a half an inch apart so we have that and uh, i have here we're going to just drop the angle of the camera sorry about that everyone as you can see i started the side here so, I've started the side, and all you're doing is you have to constantly keep pulling as you go. And I've got a rope, a bend there, and I'm just in my bin so now you see here on the top 
where I run my edge. And what I do is I'll take this top edge here. And you see how I got it here. I'll pull this back enough to get this in the corner and tuck it. Then I'm going to go across and catch my last few staples. And I'm going to show you how we done the edge. And um, we're going to actually finish this and come back. So from that, because you have this, I always tuck, pull, and I pull my pieces so that, like right here, in that corner, we have this. I'm going to give it one more real tight crunch pieces in there. And then I take this and pull it so that my edges don't puff and it comes around on the front end and gives it a actually custom made or a professional finish. Because, and I always add extra staples in that cuffing and I knock down the extra on that. So we have that. Now I'm going to just really readjust the angle of the camera. Now what you probably still won't get to see is me doing the bottom of the bed and I do it the same way. The only reason being is we're in a tight space and to film that you're going to actually get both of us in the camera. So but I'll do the bottom the same way but I do my top like I got this started here and I catch the other top. Now I'll do the sides and once I get the sides and as you're going across you're still pulling the fabric to give you the tightest fit but I do the top both sides and the bottom last. All right everyone we have finished nailing it down as you can see and again this is that hard three quarter inch plywood and I still have all of my buttonholes set in the event that I ever want to go back and put buttons back in which I actually may and I think I will be doing that very soon but that's what the back looks out like now here's the surprise. This is what the front looks like. Right here. 